I'm Adrian, the Cruise and Travel Guy. There are five important factors that you need to consider before you choose a cabin on a cruise ship, including one way that you can easily access cheaper cruise deals, and one very important tip that could save you from a lot of pain before your cruise. I've spent years looking at deck plans across all sorts of ships and across all sorts of cruise lines, and one thing that they tend to all have in common is stateroom categories. On the surface, a cabin is a cabin, but drill down a little deeper and you'll see that each broader stateroom type plays host to any number of categories. For example, a balcony cabin on P&O's Pacific Adventure is actually made up of eight cabin categories, and each category is indicated by these two characters. Here, B stands for balcony, while the desirability and in turn cost of that particular cabin is marked by the second character. In this case, it's mostly made up of letters A through F, although B2 are the most expensive balcony cabins on board, owing primarily to their larger balconies. BF are the most affordable, typically positioned well forward. The cost for different category staterooms within otherwise the same cabin type can vary by up to hundreds of dollars per passengers, so it's worth understanding how the system works. I'll talk more about why these cabins that are otherwise the same have different costs of admission in the next section. Most cruise lines operate with similar category systems, though their naming convention for that category can vary widely. Choosing a particular type of cabin can impact the experience that you have on board quite considerably. In general, you can choose between interior, ocean view, balcony, and suites. Understandably, interior cabins are generally the most affordable. While many cruisers enjoy sailing in an interior cabin for the value for money they provide, there are others that prefer to have an ocean view or a balcony. It's true that for a lot of people on a cruise, they treat their cabin as just a place to sleep, but for many others, a cabin is another part of their holiday experience and a place to enjoy some rest and relaxation. A balcony or a suite can really up the ante. If you haven't cruised before, it might be a little bit hard to know where your preferences lie, so here are my two cents. On shorter cruises, Cruises, you're more likely to make the most of the ship and its facilities, and because you have limited time on board, there's a really good chance you won't be in your cabin that often. On longer cruises though, especially those with a higher number of sea days, you're more likely to want to enjoy your own space, and having a private outdoor balcony or even a separate living room might just cap off those relaxing days at sea. Suites are about as complex a category of stateroom that exists on a cruise ship, but what you need to know about them is that they have opened up an entirely new world of onboard experiences. Referred to as the ship within a ship concept, many cruise lines now offer exclusive access to deck spaces, lounges, and even restaurants as a perk for staying in a suite. Sometimes they include a beverage package or internet access, or even a concierge or butler. Of course, the suites themselves offer more space to stretch out and are especially comfortable on longer journeys. If you're already planning to purchase a drinks package or internet access, it's worth checking the cost of suites that come with these and other inclusions as standard before you book a cabin. Choosing the correct cabin location can make a difference between enjoying a cruise and, at its most extreme, hating it. Plus, it will also determine how much you pay to get on board. There are a couple of principles to keep in mind when choosing a cabin location, and the first one is position. On board a ship, there are three main zones you want to be aware of, and these are forward, midship, and aft. Ships move side to side when they sail, but most of that motion is countered by the ship stabilizers. That isn't as much of an issue. Pitching, however, that is the up and down motion, is essentially unavoidable. And in a high swell, ships will move in that up-down motion as they sail. For that reason, midship cabins will offer a noticeably smoother ride. The more forward your cabin, the more susceptible you are to feeling the effects of pitching. Although aft cabins experience similar motions to those that are forward, they have their own set of interesting quirks. A ship's propulsion system is primarily located at its stern, so cabins located in the vicinity might be subjected to vibrations while sailing, and more noticeably when docking or maneuvering at slower speeds in port. This isn't a universal issue across all ships, but it is something to know. Ships are also large and only getting bigger, with the majority that sail around our waters around 300 meters in length, and some are even bigger than that. 
They are floating cities after all. It's worth thinking about the location of stairways and elevator banks when you choose a cabin. On the giant Quantum and Ovation of the Sea Sisters, for example, there are two main stairwells and elevator banks. The first one is located forward, and the second is towards the aft. And if you're not close to either of them, you'll have a bit of a hike every time you leave your cabin. Although extra steps are probably a good thing for most of us that will be overindulging in cocktails and endless buffets, for those with accessibility requirements, it's an important thing to check out and make sure that your travel route is sorted. Likewise, if you know that you're planning on spending most of your time on board at a particular facility, such as the pool, it might be more convenient to choose a cabin within close proximity to that area, so you can have quick and easy access throughout your cruise. For cabins with a window or balcony, the view is another consideration. Some cabins may have an obstructed view, usually blocked by the ship's lifeboats or other equipment. These are always clearly labelled on cruise ship deck plans, and you'll be advised there's an obstruction when making a booking. Obstructed view staterooms can offer a better value way to get into an ocean view or balcony cabin compared to the cost of an interior. Some obstructions are marginal, while others are quite severe, but most cruise lines provide good information about the extent of the obstruction, and your travel agent should be able to guide you. While cabins are fairly quiet spaces, it's not impossible for noise to infiltrate through the walls and even the ceilings and floors. Choosing a cabin that's directly underneath a public venue like a buffet or pool deck can come with the downside of unwanted noise, as deck furniture is arranged in the early morning or as trolleys are pushed across the floors of restaurants. You'd be surprised at just how much noise can make its way through. Likewise, cabins that are located above certain areas, such as a nightclub, well, you might just experience the noise of a DJ enjoying their bass-heavy music until the early hours of the morning. For the quietest cabin locations, choose a deck that is sandwiched between other passenger accommodation decks. And if you're susceptible to seasickness, then midship or as close to midship as possible is where you should be looking to position yourself on board. If after watching the video to this point, you're thinking, I don't really care about any of that, I just want to get on board, then a guarantee cabin is for you. A guarantee lets you book only the type of room and not a specific room. For example, if you choose a guaranteed balcony cabin, your reservation won't include a cabin number and the cruise line will select a cabin for you anytime up until you arrive for check-in at the terminal. At minimum, you're guaranteed to sail within the cabin type that you chose, in this case a balcony, and at best you might even receive an upgrade. These will generally be the most affordable way to get on board a cruise and are perfect for people that don't really care where you end up. Provided you're prepared to be in the worst location on board, then I say a guaranteed cabin is the best way to organize your next cruise and save a bundle doing it. If your guaranteed cabin has been allocated ahead of the cruise's departure date, you can sometimes change your cabin number, provided that the new cabin is available of course, and within the same category that you've already been allocated. If you're watching this video, then you're obviously not against a little research, and thanks to the contributions of thousands of past cruisers, there is a boatload, pardon the pun, of information out there that is just perfect if you are looking to research the cabins that are on your specific cruise. Look at the deck plans as well, and based on what I've mentioned in this video, have a think about where you'd be most comfortable residing on board. Of course, work with a knowledgeable travel agent, and they'll have no hassles or issues in guiding you in the right direction for your needs. Many cruise lines also offer the choice of opting in and out of automatic upgrades. And if you've spent hours researching and selecting the perfect cabin for you, you will want to mark your reservation, no upgrades. While upgrades from one cabin type to another, such as an ocean view to a balcony can happen, it's usually rare. Most upgrades occur within the same cabin type, but are a change in that two letter category I spoke about at the beginning of this video, resulting in a different cabin position. I've seen many conversations online about people who've received these sorts of upgrades and have lost their ideal cabin position. So heed my warning and make sure you opt out of automatic upgrades if you're happy with your selected cabin. Ultimately, for many cruisers, a cabin is just a place to sleep at night, but for a whole lot of other people, it is a home away from home, and especially on longer journeys, it's worth taking a little time to research the cabin to make sure it's picked exactly for your requirements and needs. 
Let me know in the comments what do you take into consideration before choosing a cabin location or are you happy to go with the flow and book that guarantee? If you're ready to book a cruise, you can head to my website, thecruiseandtravelguide.com.au and if you haven't done so already, you can give me a follow on Facebook and Instagram at The Cruise and Travel Guy. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. There are five important tips for you to know before you choose a cruise on a cabin. <laughs> And one very important tip that you don't want to miss that could have a very negative impact on your cruise. What? I've spent years looking at deck plans from all sorts of cruise ships across all sorts of cruise lines. And one thing... <laughs> Most cruise lines operate with similar category systems, but their numbers... What? If you're watching this video, then obviously you're not against a little research. And thanks to the hours and work of countless cruisers. What? There is a literal boatload, pardon the pun, of information out there and I recommend that you blah, blah. But for a whole other bunch, it is a home away from home. So it is definitely worth... Blah.